If you're looking to increase your productivity with the best project management tool, but you don't know where to start, you're gonna love Trello. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step of building a simple and super powerful workflow that will take your productivity to the next level and save you a ton of time. Let's head into Trello and get started. So we're gonna start off by going to trello.com and click on get Trello for free. From there, you can enter in your email address and you will set up a free account. They will also send you an email to verify your account, so make sure you do that as well. Step number two, we're gonna set up the workplace. You're gonna start on the Trello homepage. The homepage is where you can see all of your workspaces. And I'll use this graphic along with the video to help you visualize how Trello works. Basically, a workspace is where everything is going to go. You can think of a workspace like a section of your business, like marketing or sales, or for your personal life, you could do a productivity or a projects board. It's literally anything you want it to be. So you can go to the sidebar here and click the plus symbol to add a new workspace. The pop-up menu will let you name the workspace. So enter in the name of the board in. I'll put personal productivity. Then you can select the type from the dropdown. It doesn't matter what you pick, it's mostly for categorization purposes, but there's an optional description you can add as well. Once this is done, you can click continue, and then from there you can add members if you want by entering in their emails. Even if they don't have Trello, it will set them up with an account and then give them access to the board. We're setting up a solo productivity board today, so I'll click I'll do that later button, and then from there it will take us right into the personal productivity workspace. Step number three is to create your first board. Now you might ask what is a board, and I'll bring the graphic back up. A board exists within a workspace, and it can be a part of a team or a department or an entire workflow within your business. From there, you're gonna click on create new board and a pop-up menu will come up and you can name the board whatever you want. Let's call it get things done. And you can select the background as a solid color or an inspiring picture. From there, you can select the workplace visibility. In this case, it's just me. So it won't really matter what the visibility is. And I'll click the drop down and then click private. From there, click create and it will take you right into the board. Step four, now you're gonna add lists. So we're in the board view, whatever you create a new board, it will automatically create three lists, to-do list, doing list, and a done list. And I'll bring the graphic up again. A list is what goes within a board or a portion of your project. You can drag and drop these lists to reorder them as well. Now you don't have to use the initial list that it gives you. You can click on the title and rename them if you want and you can add new lists by clicking add another list button. When renaming these lists, you're gonna to have to think about two different things. One, what are you trying to accomplish? And two, what are the steps within the workflow look like? And you may have never thought about getting things done this way or breaking your projects up this way. So don't freak out when you see an empty page because I'm gonna walk you through step by step. The whole method of how you use Trello is called the Kanban method. And all you're doing is moving tasks from the left to the right. For example, if I add task one, it will start in the to-do list. Once I decide to engage with it, I'll drag it to the doing list. And then from there, once it's completed, I'll drag it into the done list. Now this is one of the simplest workflows possible, but your workflow might have more steps and be a little bit more complex. In that case, you would add additional lists. And that's the great part about Trello. It's as simple as it needs to be or as complex as you want it to be. It's never more than you need. Now let's get into adding cards. So step five is adding cards. Let's bring up the graphic one last time and cards go within lists. And as you can see, they can be moved in between lists as well. They often represent a task or group of tasks or a portion of the project. And cards are easy to move, change, and edit. So let's go ahead and add cards to the to-do list. For this list, I'm just gonna go ahead and brainstorm what I wanna get done this week. So I start off with a mind sweep or a brain dump and get everything into this list. Click on add a card button and then type in the lists and tasks that you plan on doing. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward these so I can plan out my entire week. Perfect. Now I have everything I need to do out of my head and into the to-do list. It's time to prioritize all of my tasks and projects. Anything you feel is important and urgent, you're gonna drag those into the doing list. Now make sure you don't add too many tasks into this list at a time. It's gonna make you feel overwhelmed and less productive, right? We only have so much bandwidth. Once these items are completed, then you'll drag them into the done category. And each task or project is a card, so you can actually go into the cards and customize them as well. 
which leads me to step six, card customization. Now there's more than one layer to cards and I'll show you how to customize them. And this is where you can really leverage the productivity within Trello. So click on a card and a menu will pop up. You can see a ton of different options and we're just gonna go over the basics. I have a full Trello tutorial and I'll link it in the description below where I explain almost every feature, but for today, we're just gonna learn the bare bones basics. Within this card view, you can edit and customize almost everything. You can click on the title and edit the title of the card. From there, you can click on the box and edit the description. Typically, I put any details or links and resources in here. This is where you can put any notes and reference links as well. You can put instructions in there for other team members if you're working with a team. Really, however you wanna organize it, it's completely up to you. So let's add some notes into the description and we'll add some bullet points and links below as well. Then hit save and everything is now embedded within the card. Let's talk about a few buttons within the card as well. First is members. If you wanna collaborate with other people or team members, you can click on members. The pop-up will show a box where you can enter in email addresses. If the person doesn't have Trello, it will walk them through setting up an account. If the person does have Trello, it will give them access to the card. This is perfect for collaborations. Anytime something is edited or added to the card, whoever is assigned to the card will be notified. This keeps everyone up to date with what's going on. The next option is labels, and this is one of my favorite options when editing a card. You can customize the color and the text. You can categorize your tasks and projects based off parts of your business. For instance, you could create a label for content creation and then add a label for admin work. Then let's add marketing. And finally, we'll add business development. You can add one label or multiple labels to a single card. Let's say this is a content creation project. So I'll click on the content creation label. And as you can see, it's been added to the card. Once all of your labels are set, I'll go back to the board view where you can see the labels as applied right to the front of the card. This is gonna help you visualize what's going on with all of your tasks and projects. Now, if you click on the label itself, it will display and hide the label name. So if you have a ton of labels and forget which one is which, here is a way to display them all. The next customization within cards is checklist. And this function comes into play with multi-step tasks or projects. Click on the checklist button and a menu will pop up where you can enter the checklist name in. So naming these is great if you have multiple checklists, but if you only plan on adding one checklist, you can just leave the name as is. So let's click on add, and then you can see a checklist has been added to the card. Now you can go ahead and add items to that checklist. Let's say I'm trying to launch a new product. I would add all of the items in for that checklist. So I would type in market research, brainstorm ideas, pick idea, outline the product, create product, create marketing plan, create sales page, and launch the product. And this is an oversimplification of the entire process, but I'm just using it as a general example of a multi-step project. Now you can go and check and uncheck each item on the list, and you can see as I check items off, the progress bar moves. If you go back into the board view, you can see the items that are checked off are displayed on the card. Now, if you go ahead and check off all the items on the checklist, the card turns green. So check everything off, go back to the board view, and the card is green. At this point, you can just drag the card into the done column. The next customization within Trello cards is due dates. We all have to meet deadlines somewhere or another, and this is how you're gonna add in due dates for your tasks and projects. Once you're in the card, click on dates, and a pop-up menu will show up with a calendar. Now you can go ahead and pick a date on the calendar or you can enter the date in into the box below. You can also have a start date and then you can see the event is stretched across the calendar. You can also set reminders for you and the team. You just have to have them assigned to the card. But let's just add a due date in and click save and you can see the due date has been added to the card. Now going back into the board view, you can see the date has been added to the front of the card as well. Once it's done, you can check the box and it turns green. On the other hand, if a task is not done by the due date, that card will turn red. The next customization within cards is attachments. The next thing you can do within a card is add an attachment. And this means that you can add external files such as pictures and documents into the card. So click on attachments and a menu will pop up. 
Now Trello allows you to access your files on your computer or on Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, or any other cloud-based service. You can also add a website link into the box below as well. This way you can have all of your reference material or items needed for this project directly into your card. This is another great collaboration tool. Once things are added to the card, you can see them displayed right here in the middle. You can easily remove, edit, and make comments on that attachment as well. So let's say we have a YouTube video that I wanna post and I wanted to add a thumbnail design. I can go ahead and add that by clicking on attachments, clicking on computer, and then clicking on the actual picture itself. Now you can see it has not only been added to the card, but it is also the cover as well. The last part about attachments is you can have the card directly connected to another card or a Trello board. So click on attachments, then click on Trello, and then you can use these options to either attach it to another board or cards. This is a great feature because you can start linking cards together if there are cards on different boards that correlate to each other. The next feature in Trello I'm gonna talk about is power-ups. This feature in Trello is how you really unlock the power of the software and scale your productivity. Now there are tons of power-ups and I have an entire video on power-ups. So if you search my YouTube channel, there are tons of videos on all different types of power-ups. It's just really too much to cover all in this video. This feature can save you a ton of time, so let's get into it. The one power-up that I think almost every board should have is the calendar power-up. If you go into this menu and click on power-ups, then you can see the power-ups marketplace. If you click on made by Trello or search calendar in the search function, you can see the calendar power-up. From there, click add, and then the power-up has been added to your board. And on top of the board, you can see the new calendar button. Now, in order for your tasks and projects to show up on the calendar, you have to add due dates to your cards. We already went over how to add due dates, so I'll just fast forward through this part as I add due dates to these cards. Now that all the due dates are added to the cards, let's click into the calendar by clicking calendar power-up button. And Trello will display all of your dates on the calendar. From there, you can drag and drop cards into other dates on the calendar, and this will update everything within the card automatically. You can also directly click into the card as well. Just click right here, and then the customization menu will show up. Now there is also a week view, so you can see everything you have to do this week. From there, you can add more cards in and really customize it however you want. The calendar is just a great addition to any board. Overall, Trello is great for customizing any workflow or business operations. It's great for solo or team, and the customizations, power-ups, and automations can really streamline your productivity. Now, we didn't get into Trello automations today, but I do have a full in-depth Trello tutorial, a link in the card above and the description below. So if you're looking to learn more about these features, click on the card. At the end of the day, it's really about making the Trello board your own with your own life, business, and workflows. Question of the day. What part of your business or workflow do you plan on building out in Trello? Let me know in the comments section below. I'll make sure I let you know what I'm currently working on in the comments below too. I'm interested to hear what you're working on and if it's a popular topic, I might just do a video entirely on it. So let me know. Now that you've set up your Trello board, I hope you can see how this type of productivity system and workflow can help your business. You're gonna to wanna to put your business systems and workflows in different boards to have everything neatly organized in one place. I have a Trello course and templates linked in the description below. So if you're looking to really master Trello to scale your productivity or just need a plug and play template to save time, I've got you covered. I've been using Trello for close to a decade now and I've helped tons of entrepreneurs scale their business with these tools and workflows. That way you can spend more time doing what you love or reinvesting that time into the business. Again, thanks for watching and until next time, stay productive.